When you finally made your entrance to that city of Jasper Wall and Golden Avenue. As you behold all its beauty and its splendor, remember there just one request I make of you. Yes, I do. Look for me. For I will be there too Yes, I will I realize when you arrive There'll be so much to do After you've been there ten thousand a million, maybe two, look for me, for I will be there too. You go down your list of firsts. There's no question you'll want to see that day all your many loved ones that's waiting, waiting there for you. And when you feel that you've shared. All of your story with the last one. That wants to hear you tell just how you made it through. Look for me, for I. I realize when you arrive, there'll be so much to do. After you've been there ten thousand years, a million, maybe two, look for me. For I will be there too. After you've been there ten thousand years, a million, maybe two. Just look for me. For her, I will be.
him down and oh my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burdened be then i am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up so i can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas i am strong when i am on your shoulders
our eternal God. We rejoice this morning that we can speak of you as the eternal one. Thank you that before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. We thank you that your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent into this world, remains the same yesterday and today and forever. So we rejoice this morning that even as we are gathered here, mindful of our own mortality, we can remember that you are the eternal God. We thank you that you have demonstrated your concern and your care for your creatures, your children. We thank you that even as we are gathered here with sadness in our hearts, we are come to you who know all about us. And we thank you especially because Jesus Christ, your Son, came to this world and he experienced all that we are experiencing. And so we remember that at the graveside of Lazarus he went. We thank you that he not only knows that through which we are going, but he empathizes with us so that we can say no one understands like Jesus. And we commit to you especially those who are grieving most at this time, the members of the family. We thank you, gracious God, that your everlasting arms have been enfolding them, supporting them. We thank you that you continue to do this even today as they face this part of the grieving process. And we know, Lord, that you will continue to be with them as the days go by. But as we come, Lord, we thank you for the life of the one of whose mortal remains we now gather. Pray that as we go through this service, in every part of it, you will be pleased to get glory and honor to yourself. For if we speak of a life well lived, it is only because you have lived your life through her. And so ultimately all praise and honor and glory belong to you. We pray that you will bless the service to all of us. That at the end of it all, we will have cause to rejoice, in spite of us all, in your goodness and mercy that will continue to extend to us. Be with us now, we pray, and may your Holy Spirit be in our midst to lead, to guide, to teach, to direct in everything, so that we will be blessed. And you will be glorified. Hear our prayer and we pray. We ask all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me extend welcome to all those who are gathered here this morning as we come to celebrate the life of our sister. As we come together to encourage the family especially as they go through this time of grieving. We come to encourage one another because especially in these days we are reminded 
standard of the way through which all of us have to go. If never before, I believe in these days, death has touched almost every family. And so we encourage one another Bear in mind that the eternal God is our refuge. Underneath are his everlasting arms. So we welcome you and trust that the family, especially, will be encouraged as you see your friends and loved ones sharing with you in this time. My name is Hubert Paul, I'm the pastor of this church. With me are other laborers. We are laborers together with Christ. And so we all will be sharing in the service this morning. We have with us friends because they are friends of the family and friends of most of us. I speak of Reverend Carlis, who is associated with the family, especially Sister Reed at the Edwin Allen High School. He will be participating in the service in the moderating, part of the moderating, uh, just after I speak. Thank you very much, Post Pastor, Reverend Hubert Paul. Greetings, family. Yeah. It is indeed uh, one of those times when we share together as a family, you know, and as we come, I'm going to invite Ali and Reed granddaughter to come with our first reading which is taken from Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 to 14. Her reading will be followed immediately by the tribute from the Kingside Baptist Church, the host church. So come in that order. God bless you. <laughs> Verses 1 to 14. Repeat. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. Together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. Recording in progress. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit? Hath he that worketh in that weary he laboreth. I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart. So that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that men should feel it for him. This ends a portion of God's word beyond the next thing. I wish to convey our deepest sympathy 
the family of our departed sister, Mistress Barrett. I can confidently assure you that we have been praying for you and that we will continue to pray for you as, your faith, as you face the days and months ahead. The God of all comfort will continue to be your helper as you go through this time of sadness and sorrow. The home going of your beloved sister, sorry, the home going of our beloved sister highlights the history of a long relationship with the Tweedside Baptist Church. There are those among us who remember her father-in-law as our ardent attendant of this church. The fellowship continued with her as her late husband up to the time of his passing. They were both introduced to the church by the late Lynette Cole, who, though being a member of this church, often fellowshiped with the Barretts at the Anglican Church. Their attendance at first was mainly at the missionary and harvest service. Later they they prove <laughs> sorry. Identically began to attend the morning service until the passing of her husband. The children too began to attend at this afforded Sister Barrett's transportation to and from church. When her sons were not able to come, Sister Donna took her own stand with us, was baptized, and on the same day of her baptism, both mother and daughter were given the right hand of fellowship and were received into the membership of the church. Sister Barrett was not the hand-clapping, feed-stamping worshiper, but there was no doubt about her sincerity to her God and Master. Her keen, undivided attention, especially to the preaching of God's word, left us with no doubt but that she loved her Lord and his word. Today we celebrate her life and rejoice in the blessed hope that she is with her Lord, which is far better. She is, she is also fellowshipping with her husband and sister Cole, where there is no denominational division. Her soul is resting in peace. I want to at the start invite a tribute from Poor Smith, who is a family friend, after which we will all join together and pay our tribute in singing of this tremendous hymn of the day, Part of My Soul. So at this time, for it, sit it, come with us. Members of the clergy, post pastor, Hubert Hall, pastor, Long and Lou, pastor, Errol Gooden. Members of the choir, inside, to the bereaved family, and to close family members and well wishers. Good morning. I made a journey when I got the news of Mrs. Barry, and I found out three things today. I found out that Garfield, one of the sons, being my best friend, and proud to say forever, I'm not even sure from what we do each other. And for Donna and her, we're all family. I do literally like a second child to Mrs. Barrett and her husband. And you know, I learned something today which I didn't know in all the years. I knew Mrs. Barrett. I didn't know her name was Kate. And I thought to myself, I probably could have passed a sign over here that said, funeral service from Kate. And I'll say to my brother, this is not the, this is not the place. I also learned where three side is because I'm coming all the way from Montego Bay. So I had to use my younger brother, which is part of the family as well, to navigate to get here. And I found out that I didn't know there was such lush vegetation, coolness, because where I'm at, it's quite cool and hot. 
but here it seems like it's just peaceful and serenity. Mm -hmm. So I see why everyone seems to be looking peaceful, wonderful, mm -hmm. and glory from this side. Mm -hmm. I want to remember three things because when I got home from Monterey to Clarendon, I came to Clarendon, spent the night with my mom. And my mom and Mrs. Byer literally grew up as sisters. And what you found out is that when we were kids, I found Mrs. Barris love to be infinite. When, when, when we were kids and my mom would go to the market or vice versa, Mrs. Barris would leave us with, my mom would leave us with Mrs. Barris as a younger sibling. And one of the things you can tell about children when you come back to pick them up, if something was wrong or they didn't enjoy their stay, as you came, they would greet you and run to you. When my mom came, we'd still be there sitting and say hi, and you know, that's good at you. So she then got a bit jealous and said, hold on, are you not ready? And we said, no, no, we're fine. And she just leave and then eventually we go home. But it's all to the infinite love we felt from Mrs. Barrett. And it's something that is so infectious in the neighborhood where we work. Because what you find is that whenever we were kids, I can't even remember us arguing, and even we arguing, we always seem to some reason with the parents. It never got to that point, you know, where you find bad lines or wrong. It was such a wonderful time of parenting that we all grew up around. And these are some of the qualities that you find. You don't find that infinite love, that infectiousness that you find with parents now, where when your child and someone else's child is here, they treat you as their own. So there is this constant love, and that is what I found about me. But it was just infinite. You know, you wanted to hear about her upset. I don't care her body. I never remember seeing her being upset. And even if she did, I never saw it. There was just a wonderful way of describing it. Meal time was also a wonderful time. We could be here all day. Yes, <laughs> boy, yes. Yeah, it's very really proper cook and you want to cook it. And what would happen is that. Some parents, even in modern day, you know, when you're cooking with the children, you kind of get your friends to tell the friends and say, and then you to leave. Mm -hmm. No, that's what will happen most times. But then, if it uses a smaller bowl, everybody who is at that home will have something to eat. And that was the, these were the little things we learned. And I guess that's why when we grew up around each other, we didn't argue, we didn't fight, we shared, we shared. Because this was what was always emanating from that household itself. The other thing I found about her that was also outstanding was her listening. A lot of times, a lot of people would say, I hear you. But the key about listening and hearing anything first is that you have to listen to hear. And that's the connection. You tell someone something and they say, yeah man, they hear you. And by the time they go out the car, they come back. Because we keep forgetting the logic of that skill is to listen. You listen first and then you know that the next thing that comes automatically is hearing. And that was what I also found. I remember one time we were talking about girls, Garfield and I, we were whispering here, and Mrs. Park always had an ever presence on the veranda and heard us. And I remember we were talking something about writing a note or something. I don't remember what it was. And I remember a voice was quietly said over to the window and the next said, on the show, no one do that. <laughs> so, so she's always there with that listening. It was that point where she could sit in at your presence and you didn't even know she was sitting there and you were outside, oblivious to the fact that when you looked in the sunset, she wasn't there. And she'd come and stay that seat and just quietly listen. She never interjected. And it was always someone there. If you wanted something, how it works with mom then, and maybe even now with most of us as well. The father said to be the iron fist. So anytime we want to go anywhere first, the first person you go to is the mother. So sometimes when I want something, or daddy, or any other, or anybody wants something to be done, and you know daddy, when daddy come in, he won't put conditions to it. It was unconditional when it came to mommy. She gave you that trust and that encouragement. So when you said something, you said, mommy, you know I want to go somewhere, but that is still coming. You can make it more. <laughs> And you think, and by the time daddy comes in and, you, and mommy serves him dinner and say, you know, the kids want to go somewhere and you think about it and say, all right. 
and that was it. You got an easy, easy pass by doing that. But one of the things you found is that they listened. They had that constant thought and fear. The third thing I realized as well is your love for spirituality. One of the things they encourage us to always do, even when kids grow up. Anyway, we depart from church, you know, I've always said it to all of us growing up. If we depart from church, it's just and the feet each other and God. <laughs> because when we were kids growing up, even when they had to carry us, when it was too much of us to wear the car, we used to sit in laps. Just to sit in the car to go to church. So introduction and being a part of church involvement was something that wasn't foreign to us. We were introduced to that. I remember we developed a youth arm at church in Clarendon at St. Sorry, at St. Peter's. These were the things they encouraged us to do. And one of the things they always said, whenever we had challenges in school, college, even when you went off to college, one of the things you always wanted to do was look forward to coming back home. You have a lot of times in the modern day where the kids get urbanized and they go to Kingston or other places. They really want to come back home. We, because of the infectious love and the dinner, the loving, the care, and the good cooking, you always say, boy, well, you can't wait to school to wait man. You just want to go. And it's always a sad day when you leave there. They never showed it a lot, but they hug you and give you words of encouragement. And these are the things that are infectious. These are the things that is Mrs. Barrett's legacy itself. And I sat with my mom and I spoke with her just before coming. And you know, I had to think of all the things. Each time I stayed at her, I remember that I went through a memory bank of things that both of them would do. And it's like, even though they have lost a mother as well, they have gained something else. That is priceless. The legacy of the memory of all the things she did. The legacy of the family members that are not by birth but are paternal. The support of those friends who can pick up a phone. Because I am at the other end of the island from Garfield and there's never a time he doesn't pick up that phone and give me a call. And I'm never too busy to pay that call. And we still use pet names. So there's a unique thing about us in growing up. A lot of times people have normal names now. We, have, we all have pet names itself. And one of the things that we also learn is, I've always been amazed by, one of the most amazing things in, spite, in my final record, is the humming. I remember sometimes you hearing mom cooking, Mrs. B cooking, and even if sometimes when the dads may get upset, the mothers have always had this thing of humming. And it seemed to somehow just soothe the whole of us and the answer on you. And I never knew what song they were humming, but there was always a humming sometimes. Even sometimes when they're not feeling well. And they'll be rubbing you up or something, you hear them humming. And you say, what is it that they are? I have always been curious. And up to this day, it's like, it's just a bottle inside to say, what are you singing? But it was so soothing. It was so refreshing and so loving about it. In wrapping up, <laughs> finally, it's a, it's a responsible leg when you're doing a relay. But the, 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 the choir started, I am on the second leg, so the battle is critical to move to the third leg. But well, let me wrap up by saying this finally. There's a song I always remember each time when I'm home, and it says, If I could count the tears that have fallen, it would seem like an ocean to me. If my heart was a window, mm -hmm. you could look through it. Tears will, oh, the pain and scars you would see. Tears will never stay. The streets of that city, no grief of death on my mansion door. Teardrops aren't welcome beyond the gates of glory. For the heart will never break. And, and that is my message to the family. Thank you. Thank you so much. So of course.
Smith, wonderful children, standard children, and we are thankful on behalf of the family for your sharing. I want to again extend to the family my own condolences and prayers at this difficult time. The good thing is, one on the one hand, we are never prepared for death. And one great man said, the only problem with life is that none of us get out of it alive. <laughs> On the other hand, I can tell you from being with her that mom was ready. Amen. And that she was at peace. Yes. And that she had all of her faculties intact. Yes. And we praise God for the way in which she departed and the legacy that she left us. Frederick. William Faber, great civil writer of the 1800s. Unlike many other people, he was converted from Anglican to Catholic. He became a priest. Normally people are converted from Catholic to Anglican. So he became a priest. He wrote many great hymns, including the faith of our fathers. But the one that we sing now is just as famous as those. The hymn, Part Part My Soul. Angelic songs are spread. Let's stand together and bend our voices together as we pay our tribute in remembering and reflecting and anticipating what we are living for and where we are going and heading for. Mm -hmm.
worshiping. Just take some time and celebrate the anticipation that we have. Angels of Jesus. Angels of light. Singing to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship him. Just take a moment and worship him. Just take some time and celebrate him. And think about that day. Thank you, Jesus. No more state of emergency. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. No more confusion. Mm -hmm. No more conflict. Jesus. Just the angels of Jesus. 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 Just those angels of life. Hallelujah. Picture them mm. in a way. Jesus. Singing to welcome. Yes. To salute. Yes, Thank you, Lord. The pilgrims. Okay. Can we sing it one more before us? Angels of Jesus, angels of love, singing to welcome the pilgrims of the night. Amen. The city of the camp. Amen. The reading that comes next is so fitting because it it's right into this angelic welcome. Mm -hmm. Reading from second lesson from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 to 18. Mm -hmm. Jordan, read, granddaughter, you'll come back this time. Mm -hmm. Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of God, and the dead in Jesus shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord. 18 at last. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is a portion of God's word. We honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just stand at the front. Just stand at the front. Just stand at the front. Stand at the front. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. We're going to walk those streets of glory by and by.
are still serving the Lord faithfully. So we celebrate it. Amen. 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 In a short while, I'll be passing the baton to our little Edwin Allen baby who just left Edwin Allen. And in a short time, he spent three years in St. Catherine pastoring. And now he is in Bob Hole and Desire pastoring for four years. So I looked at him and said, What is this? Yes, we are even doing. Sister Bruni remembers him quite well. And he hasn't changed. He has been that same man of God when he was at school. Yes, in the light of here. Same young man from school days. Praise God. I will praise God for them. So I'll be handing over the back to him shortly. Before I do that, I'm inviting the Ebony tribute. And coming with them is our new principal, Mr. Jeremy Walters. All right. Mr. Jeremy Harris. And he will bring tribute. He will bring a short tribute, after which the Ebony family will. Uh, Minister and song, and then I must decrease, and he must increase. Amen. 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 Ministers, very family, brothers and sisters, all. Indeed, the Edwin Allen High School family is quite saddened by the passing of. Is a barrack. I came up on a piece of literature just two weeks ago and it said that persons who attend services at a church, a synagogue or a mosque live longer than those who don't. And the more I attend funerals, I realize that this finding is perfectly true because I realize that most persons who go beyond 70, they are associated with a church, a synagogue, or a mosque. Amen. I'm not a pastor today, but I want to encourage those that are not associated with a church to get associated with them. Amen? Amen. So, Hazel Barrett, Miss Cass, she came to the wicket 90 years ago and she played a majestic innings. And it is quite fitting today that the Edwin Hallin High School will be paying their tribute in the form of a song. But I'm just giving a little brief synopsis in terms of our thoughts for the late Hazel Barrett and for our co-worker, Mrs. Barrett Reed. Mrs. Barrett Reed is currently the senior vice principal at the school. And Mrs. Barrett, we, Barrett Reed, we want to say to you today that we will continue to stand by you. We will continue to provide all the moral support. You have been a tower of strength to your mom, and we know that it drained you a lot, but God knows everything. Else. And as you move on from today, we pray and trust that the good Lord will continue to be your strength and your guide. So on behalf of the Board of Management, teaching and non-teaching staff, students of the Edwin Halley High School. We offer our sincere condolences to you and the bereaved family. May God bless you all. I hope that this song will be of some consolation to you and the family. Over to our lead singer. And this is just a subset of the Edwin Halley family, but we could not allow all of them to leave school because teaching is still going on, all right? So, I know the Lord will fix it for me.
shoulder freeze. To my fellow ministerial colleagues, Pastor Hubert Paul, the host pastor, Reverend Cardis, and to Bishop Errol Gooden, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I especially greet Bishop Gooden because he is my superior. And even if I didn't plan to behave myself today, I have to behave. Bishop Gooden is a member of the National Executive Council. He's a former member of the National Executive Council of the New Testament Church of God. And we just want to acknowledge you today on behalf of Bishop Paul. We want to acknowledge your presence here today. Bless the Lord. Amen. As we continue with the program at this time, I would invite Norma Christie and Hazel Christie, nieces of the deceased, to come with their tribute. Immediately following the Christies, we will have a tribute from the Tweedside, an item from the Tweedside Baptist Church. We will come in this order. Thank you. strength. She faced her health challenges with incredible strength 
determination, and a passion for life. And curse will always remain in our hearts. The word of God says, Blessed are those who die in the Lord, for they have finished their work and are at rest. To those she has left behind, let the memories of the time you share with her give you peace and comfort. May her soul rest in peace.
midst of our lived a full life, Amen. we could say. But it doesn't take away from the pain and the sorrow when death comes. But we have hope. Especially for those who trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The pain is lightened by that fact that our loved one is not gone forever. That our loved one is with Christ. And that those of us who continue to live and believe in Jesus will be reunited with them some sweet day. I want to leave a brief word with you from Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. Paul is giving his testimony, his commitment to Jesus Christ. Philippians 1. And verse 21. For to me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. And I just want to take those four words. Those simple. Loaded. With meaning. So I leave them with you. To die is gain. To die is gain. I have a feeling that because I'm getting older, I'm understanding more and more that death is not so bad after all. <laughs> I was thinking sometime in last week that maybe it's because the heavenly breezes are going against me. <laughs> but to die is gain. It's saying something very, very sweet. And I said there are just simple words, four words. But all the depth and the weight of those four words. Because I want to suggest to us that those four words are saying that there is something about us that is distinct and different from the body that you see. Because if the body is all there is, how could there be gain after death? But there is something called the soul. And this is suggestive of the fact, therefore, that when the body is dead and buried and has disintegrated, there is something that continues to live on. The poet beautifully states, life is brief and life is earnest 
but the grave is not our home. Dust thou art, to dust returneth, was not spoken of the soul. There is something called the soul. I will not forget those early years of upbringing at home and the devotional times we have. And then my father led in prayer. And as he prayed for us, he petitioned God to help us to understand that we have a hell to shun, a hell to gain, and a soul to save. And Paul suggests that to die is gain. He is suggesting that we have a soul. Yes. But beyond that, it also teaches us that there is life after death. There is life after death. For the body dies, but the soul does not die. And if there is any doubt about that, listen to what Jesus said to Martha. The occasion of the death of her brother Lazarus. Jesus, now knowing that Lazarus had died, he went to the house. And Martha thought he should have been there before. So she complained. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But she intimated a certain faith. She said, But I know that even now, whatever you ask your father, he will do it for you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will live again. And she said, yes, Lord, I know that he will live again at the resurrection at the last day. And I heard a few months ago someone who was preaching, I said preaching, But his preaching was not according to the word of God. And I say this because he was, he was trying to prove from the scriptures that there is no immortality of the soul. There is no life after death. And so he picked up on, on Martha's word and praised Martha that she should say to Jesus, yes, I know he will live again at the resurrection at the last day. But he failed to go any further. You see, actually, John chapter 11 and verse 24 is that which Martha says, I know he will live again at the resurrection at the last day. And he praised Martha and said, Martha, 
had been listening to Jesus and had learned from Jesus because Martha now speaks about the resurrection at the last day and did not speak about the life after death. But he failed to go on to verse 25. Because if he had gone on to verse 25, it would have totally demolished his false teaching. Because verse 25 says, these are the words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Not a Greek student, but I can tell you this: that what is there in John chapter eleven and verse twenty-five mm. is this: and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never, never die. An emphasis. Upon the fact that the person who lives and believes in Jesus cannot die. So we say to die is gain. But you can only gain if there is something apart from the body. To die is gain. And you can only gain because you are living again. Or living still. And it's the best without going any way deep into the four words that yes. If to die is gain, it means that when you die, you're going to gain something after death. So simple as that. You cannot gain something when you are not alive. There has to be life. And this is suggesting that there is an active participation into something. If you're going to gain, it means you have to be alive and participate. So then, what is it? What is it that you get paid when you die? Well, it's a statement that goes only to the believers in Jesus Christ. about you other preachers, but you know, sometimes when I stand before a congregation like this, I just wonder if there are people who are seated before us who, who are saying, what are these people talking about? <laughs> because it seems so far-fetched. But my friends, the reality of this is proven down through the centuries. And the word that we have, which we call the word of God, is a sure word. And gives us a hope that there is beyond this life something that we can participate in. So that is me. So Paul, as he 
contemplated his own his own life. You see, he said, I'm in a strait between two things. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is hard. But on the other hand, this, it is more necessary for you that I remain with you. This is what you were saying to the Philippian Christians. So Paul anticipated something after death. And that's why he was able to say to die in his game. Because Paul is asserting that after death, he is going to live with Jesus. And even more so, he says, to be with Christ is far better. Can you understand what I mean then when I say that is not so bad after all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because Sister Barrett, dear children, dear children, it's not going to be worried again about COVID-19. <laughs> Sister Barrett is not going to be worried about looking after dinner. <laughs> She's not going to worry again about any sickness. Nothing that is going to cause her to have negative thoughts or to be worried in any way, shape or form will cross her path. To be with Christ is far better. So Paul's words, simple as they are, to die is gay, is suggestive of the fact that when the believer dies, that believer will gain Christ. And to gain Christ is better than being in this world. I'm going away. You know, sometimes we sing some of these songs and choruses, and uh, we don't cause the meaning and the blessedness of these thoughts to sink deep in our hearts. To be with Christ is far better. Well, I don't know where you are today, how it is with you. I said earlier that maybe it's because the heavenly priests are going against me. Why I have these thoughts? And I'm not hastening my life. And I still don't find any fault with life. But there are days, brother preachers, I don't know if it is so with you, but there have been days, especially on the Lord's day, when I've had a good day in the presence of the Lord. And I come to the end of the day and I, I think, wow, oh, if my journey here on earth has come to an end, I would gladly go to be with the Lord. Because when you think that you have to come back to the reality of life and all the things that surround you and the things that dog your path day after day, the trials and the temptations and the struggles then to be with Christ is it 
This is my father. But if it's necessary that while they are here, we should be here. But it doesn't mean that we should not anticipate. We are going to receive not only Christ, the Word of God speaks about the crown of life that faded not only. But we are going to be rewarded. Because to die is vain. And yes, I'm not going to be rejoicing so much in the fact that I have lived a good life. But God, who has called his people to himself, and by his spirit has equipped them for service, they carry out their service for God and for his people. There is a crown of life coming after death. To die is gain. Amen. And so for those two things, or shall I say, for that person, and for that thing, for that person, Christ, and for that crown of life which made it that away. You think about death, in spite of the sorrow that comes with it, don't let the sorrow overcome you. Think of being with Christ, which is part of it. Think of the crown of life that you are going to receive, that crown of life which faded not only. By the grace of God, mm -hmm. I know some sweet day I'm going to be so blessed that I will see Jesus, the lover of my soul, face to face, and tell the story saved by grace. By the grace of God, I know someday. Not because so much of what for what I have done, but because of the goodness and the mercy of God, I shall pass into the presence of Jesus Christ, my blessed Savior, and I shall receive the crown of life, which faileth not only. I close when I ask you this question. What is your hope? I don't have to try to convince you that if time lasts, all of us will die. Yes. When you die, or before you die, will you have hope that you will be with Christ and that you will receive that crown of life. And today, if you don't have that hope, I will simply exhort you, I beg of you, before you die, seek the Lord. He's here today, thank God. Because it does not only mean a church service. And I mean, you know, all regular church services. But the promise is that we are two or three are gathered together in my name. They are my in the midst of them. Jesus is here. 
Retard. Touch him. Believe his word. My personal sins. And he will save you. Give you that hope. So that when you die, you will gain Jesus Christ himself. And you will gain a crown of life. It doesn't fail me. May God bless you and bless his word to you all. For his name's sake. And waited 
God's command. And God said, Go down, death. Go down. Go down to Mandeville, Manchester, down in Jamaica, and find the sister Hazel. She has borne the heat and the burden of the day, and she's tired. She's weary. Go down there and bring her to me. And death didn't say a word. But he loosed the reins on his pale white horse, and he clapped to the spurs on his bloodless side. And on and down he rode, through heaven's pearly gates, past suns and moons and stars, on death road, leaving the lightning flash behind, straight down he came. While Helian and Jordian were watching round her bed, she turned and she looked away. She saw what they couldn't see. She saw old death. She saw old death coming like a fallen star, but death did not frighten Sister Cass. He looked on her like a welcome friend, and she whispered, I'm going home. And she smiled and closed her eyes. And death took her up like a baby. And she lay in his icy arms. But she didn't feel no chill. And death began to ride again up beyond the evening star into the glittering light of glory onto the great white throne. And there he laid Sister Cass on the loving breast of Jesus. And Jesus took his own hands and he wiped away her tears. And he smoothed the forest from her face. And the angels sang a little song. And Jesus rocked her in his arms. And he kept her singing, Take your rest, take your rest, take your rest. We not. She's not dead. She's resting in the bosom of Jesus. Put your hands together one more time for the people. I I am so elated listening to Mrs. Ricketts. Many of you may not know that I am a lover of drama. And in my early days at Edwin Allen, Mrs. Ricketts was my drama teacher. And in the latter part, Mrs. McCarthy took over. Raise the hand, Mrs. McCarthy, we did the arts. And so I, I really felt that feeling listening to Mrs. Ricketts. Well done, Mrs. Ricketts. Praise the Lord. This is a hymn in our program. Mrs. Farmer, you're the reason I speak so well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's a hymn in our program. We'll be doing that one as our offertory hymn. And it is, God is working his purpose out. For your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us jobs so that we can earn. We thank you, Lord, for the will that we can give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. Father, as this offering is about to be collected, bless it to your purpose, Lord, that it will help to enhance your kingdom here on earth. Lord, for those who are giving, will you restore their baskets? Those who do not have to give today, Lord, will you breathe upon them, Lord, and bless them, that in due season, they too will have to give to your work here on earth. We thank you now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Can we stand for a change as we do?
time with the eulogy is Ernie Ford Barrett, Garfield Barrett, and Donald Barrett Reed. These are the children. Walk and talk in a new
and we have memories of dad and the other parents coming to pick us up at lunchtime and taking us back to school for the afternoon session. Mom would always have a hot meal ready for us and right on time, always on time. And we ate as a family. She saw to dinner when everyone came home and this was without seeming to break a sweat. As we got older, we would assist and we would advise her to take a break every now and then. But mom always liked things done a specific way, so she would still do the greater share of the work. If we started doing something for her and she was not satisfied, she would take it from us and do it herself. So resting was almost never a part of her vocabulary. Even as adults, there were occasions when we would take over and tell her to take a break. Mom being mom would just find something else to do. She was an exceedingly hard and diligent worker and wasn't happy when she started to slow down. Mom never had to call us to help her when working. We would wake up, hear her, for example, outside raking the yard, and we automatically got up and headed outside to help. She never had to say, get up over your bed. I don't know, I'm the last one. But I was thinking that she may have said it to my brothers. But when I checked with them, they said no. But I just follow suit. Mom was not only a mother to us, but extended her rearing skills and her influence extended to such relatives, namely me, Mrs. June, or Jean Christie, Sherry Christie, she's now deceased, or cousin-in-law Nestle Johnson, stepson Lawrence Barrett Sr., grandnephews, Lawrence Barrett Jr. and Edward Barrett. She was also very influential in the rearing of her, of my children, mm -hmm. Fabian, Jordan, and Ali and Lee. Mm -hmm. Mom had a sweet singing voice. Her love of singing was evident, especially while doing her chores. Mm -hmm. And this was very comforting for us. That's how we became accustomed to hymns like his eyes are on the sparrow, the clouded day, be glory for me. And this fans her children and the grandchildren. Mom was always active in various PTAs at Anne Primary, at fairs, and other functions, and while we were at Glenmuir High, especially when Ernie and myself were preparing to go on a Cincinnati tour with the Glenmuir High School choir. She was not only active in our school life, but she ensured that the church was a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. She was not only a parent that just sent us to church and Sunday school, but she too was very active in the work of the Lord here on earth. Mm -hmm. She sang soprano on the church choir and was the mem a member of the Mother's Union of the church and participated actively in their events such as tea parties and excursions. I have been to all the tea parties with her and all, on all the excursions. She also helped with the cleaning of the communion vessels for church every second Sunday along with Mrs. Smith. She was a very hospitable person, though she was of a quiet demeanor. While we lived in there, she would welcome our friends. Whenever they came to our house and mom was cooking, they would head to the kitchen to get some of whatever was being prepared. The African Youth Fellowship that we had, the members and our friends, were always welcome at our house. At Christmas, there were always a few persons from these groups who would come over for cake and salary that Monday. The young men in the community, especially at Monimus, would
would purchase their shirts big and take them to mom and she would do the alterations free of cost. Mom all, was always happy to share her culinary skills with us. And as a result, we all learned how to get around in the kitchen. We would impart nuggets on how to get things right. There were also some of us who benefited from a few craft skills courtesy of mom. And that was, I, I, when I came to have sense, I learned, I came seeing my brother doing crushing. And I don't know if you remember what is Antim of Yes. Right, right. She taught you that. We said before that mom was of a quiet demeanor. But don't let that lull you into the false sense that she was a pushover. And mm -hmm. like she was anything but that. She was indeed a disciplinarian. One box was sufficient to make you realize you had passed your place. Not two, just one. As you do it. One. In 2011, mom was diagnosed with breast cancer and had that breast removed. Her strength during that time was inspiring. And she always seemed to be positive and carried on despite having lost a breast. She survived this challenge and for a while it seemed that there was nothing that she couldn't overcome. But God had other plans. Mm -hmm. In 2005, our mother was diagnosed with chronic renal failure. Her response when, we, when she was told that something had her response was when she was told that she had this renal failure, she said something had to come to take her home, and it did. On July 21, the twins' birthday, after several weeks at Percy Junior Hospital, she was admitted, then transferred to Mandeville Regional Hospital. She was treated and released on August 6. She was again admitted on January 1, New Year's Day. She celebrated her 90th birthday on Saturday, July 15th, and she slept away on Monday morning, January 17th, 2020. We give thanks for her life and all that she did for us and say farewell for now. Hazel Del Cassandra Barrett, me Christy, who survived by children, Ernie Ford, also known as Gary, Garfield, Donna, grandchildren, Brian, Richard, Fabian Jr., Jordan, Allian, Carleen, Lawrence, Edwards. Great grandchildren, Ajay and Amaya. In laws, stepson, nieces, nephews, and other relatives and friends. The relatives who were not able to be here sense their love and their prayers. Thank you to the doctors who stood by us in the times of her sickness, particularly those who, outside of their working hours, kept in touch with us, namely Dr. Ian McCall and Dr. Everett Barton. To Nurse Miller, who made visits to attend to mom twice weekly to the goodies and other family friends and relatives who stood by us until mom's passing and are still standing. To you all, we love and are appreciative of your support. I would like to especially thank my children, Jordan, Alan, and Fabian. My brother, Ernie Ford, and Carl My nephews, Brian and Richard. My husband, Fabian. And my niece in law, Shelby. There wasn't a time they were not there. We would also like to express appreciation and thanks 
to everyone who stepped in and stepped up. Everyone who remembered us and assisted us in every area during the period between mom's death to this very moment. There are two numerous to mention individuals at home, in our community, as well as abroad. The support you gave went above and beyond. We love you all. I especially like to recognize my brother's co-workers from VMS who made the trip here today. And for a prayer meeting, I see Mr. Hyman at the back. And there are some ladies at the front. Thank you. That leaves heartaches only God can hear. Love leaves memories. No one can see it. Thank you very much for such a lovely eulogy. You have been a wonderful audience. And at this time, Bishop Aaron Quinn will be coming to do the prayer for the family. And standing in the gap for you. Just remember someone, somewhere is praying for you. Calling out your name, praying for your strength. And he standing.
in naked clarinda. The Spirit of God notify you and the Spirit of God put up a front against you. After the death of Sister Barrett, their children shall live well in Jesus' name. The son in England shall live well. Ghana shall live well. The children of Ghana shall live well. And the son in many pain and children shall live well. I ask you to prosper them. Oh God, don't let poverty and bankruptcy come near their dwelling. Give them right decision making process to do good business in Jesus' name. Give them good family life. Give them good marriage. Amen. Let the church a good marriage. Good relationship with people. Lord, keep away the wrong people out of their lives. We bind bad mind. We bind covetousness. In Jesus' name. We bind hypocrites. In Jesus' name. We bind sorcerers. In Jesus' name. <laughs> We bind people who give it witch in Jesus' name. We bind people who give it deity in Jesus' name. Makotoria, Hasia, Kanda, and any other foreign spirit. So, Lord, I ask you at this time, finally, to put a halo around them. Lord, put an embankment around them when they sleep night and day. Hallelujah. That nothing shall go. Nothing shall come within this circle. Let there be no intersection to this circle. In Jesus' name, I mash up the compass. I am a, I mash up the protractor. The blood of Jesus! You'll never intersect this circle around them. <laughs> For he shall give his angels charge over you. Lord, how can I forget this as it comes on the radar? Let the two daughters go well in school. God grant them good past and successes and good tertiary training. And I pray that Jay, oh God, will continue his educational journey. And that, amen, mother and father will be blessed. Father, I thank you for hearing these petitions. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Let the church of God say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. And say amen. amen. God bless you.
I never continue in one say. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased? We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God of His mercy and His providence to remove from this world the soul of our sister here departed. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the general resurrection and of the life to come at the last day. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. Let's turn to our programs and the hymns designated at the graveside. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. When the roll is called up yonder. I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the sieve of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is caught up yonder and is there. When the roll is caught up yonder, when the roll is caught up yonder, when the roll is caught up yonder. This morning when the dead in Christ shall rise And the glory of His resurrection shares When His chosen ones shall gather Who are home beyond the sky And the road is called up yonder at the end oh, And the road is called up yonder When the road is called up yonder Yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll 
be there. Let us labor for the master from, from the, the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and the work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there.
this life of Rona, fly away. When the king commands the spirit to be free. 
Nevermore with anguish laden, we shall reach the lovely Eden, when the ring of golden for you and me.
for